News for you, awesome websites without code. Hey, what's up, users? John with Muse for You here to help you build awesome websites without code. And in today's video tutorial, we're going to go over the image shapes widget found at museforyoushop.com. Um, so you can think of this widget in terms of creating vector shapes in Adobe Illustrator, uh, where you can create a few lines and create a shape in Illustrator. Uh, with this widget, you can create a shape and then fill that shape with an image in Adobe Muse. Um, so it's kind of something I wish Adobe Muse had in the beginning. Uh, so rather, or built in, so rather than just, you know, rectangles or squares or circles, you could create any shape and fill that shape with an image. So this widget is now to introduce that feature into Adobe Muse, where you can create any shape and fill that shape with an image. So here we're on the preview page. So I have a few examples. So this first example here is just a square with the center cropped out. Uh, this next one here is the image cropped into an X. This third one here is a square just uh, kind of at an angle. Uh, the fourth one here is kind of an abstract shape filled with an image. Here we have a speech bubble, a square speech bubble with an image filled in. And here we have a polygon with five sides. Um, just letting you know you can create any shape uh, with this widget. Uh, so it's a really fun widget. It's a nice way to add more interesting shapes to your website and images in Adobe Muse. So here I'll go back to the widget page and here are the features included. So you can add custom shapes to images on your Adobe Muse website. You can set the image to scale to fill, scale to fit, or original size. And you can set the image to responsive width or responsive width and height. So one thing with this widget, uh, Internet Explorer and Microsoft Edge do not support clipped images like this, where you can kind of shape the image and create any shape. Um, and that's just Microsoft. They never tend to keep up with the latest web development practices. They're always a bit behind. Uh, I'm hoping Microsoft Edge does support this uh, in the near future, but for now, Internet Explorer and Microsoft Edge don't support it. Internet Explorer is always a bit behind, but on those two browsers, clipped images is not supported. Um, I would recommend using the browser update widget to notify users using those browsers uh, to update their browser. Uh, on those browsers, the image just becomes a complete image, so the whole image is shown rather than it being a certain shape. So just wanted to mention that there. If you did need the cropped images to work in those browsers, what I would recommend is using the widget as a reference, creating the shapes, and then cropping the image in a photo in a photo editing program like Photoshop, and then placing those cropped images into Adobe Muse. All right, but on all the modern browsers like Chrome, Firefox, Safari, and Opera, the widget works really well, and most users are using those browsers. I think Internet Explorer has the lowest browser market share. Um, so if you can look it up and just see what browsers are being used the most and decide if you want to crop the images manually or use this widget to have those image shapes on your website. All right, so this is the widget page. Here are a few of the widget options, the community section. And yeah, the community section is right down here and the video will be posted here as well. So I'll go ahead and get started. I'll open up Adobe Muse. I'll just create a new site and click OK here and I'll double click. So when you first download the widget, whether you purchase individually from the widget page or if you download it from the subscription, um, you'll get a zip file. So you'll just have to extract the zip file and in that folder, there's a .mulib file. You simply double click and it will automatically install the widget into your library panel in Adobe Muse. So here to the right, I have the library panel. And if you don't see the library panel, you can go to window and click on library. So here in the library panel, I'm just going to type in image shapes. And here we have the image shapes widget. So I'll go ahead and click hold and drag the widget onto my Adobe Muse website. And at first you just get this widget container with this question mark uh, because it's looking for an image. So we're going to add an image in a second. Uh, but here we have the widget options. We have instance, uh, we have image and the polygon code. So the instance number is just if you have multiple image shapes, each image shape will want to have a unique instance number so different image shapes are not inheriting images or properties from other image shapes. So if you had three, for instance, um, the first one could have instance number one, the second could have instance number two, and the third could have instance number three, and so on. All right, here's where you add the image. So I'm gonna go ahead and select an image. So I'll click Add File, and I'll just select an image here from my Images folder. So I'll select this image, and just like that, we have 
this image shape. So the reason it's a, a triangle right now is because in the polygon code, this is the code for a triangle. So let's go ahead and change this shape right away. It's actually quite simple. Uh, you simply click on Clip Path Maker, and then here you can create your shape. You can move these dots around. Uh, this website is bennettfeely.com. It's a website by Bennett Feely, uh, where he created this site where it produces the code necessary to apply this shape uh, to the image on, on your website. So here I'll just um, create a shape. There's a few custom shapes here, so I'll select uh, this bevel shape here. Um, so after you select your shape, you can also you know move these dots around. Um, after your shape is created, you can just go down here with the uh, polygon code and just copy the numbers in between the parentheses. Uh, this is the code that creates that shape and allows that image to be filled within that shape. So here I'm going to hit Command C to copy. Uh, right down here, this code is the same, so just copy this first line uh, in between the parentheses, these numbers, and then go into the widget and paste that code in there, in the polygon code section. So just like that, we have that shape applied to this image. So it's as easy as that. You just add the image, add the polygon code from the Clip Path Maker website, and create your shape, and then copy the polygon code right down here, and then paste that polygon code into the polygon code section of the widget. So just remember, it's the numbers in between the parentheses. You don't want to copy the parentheses, but the numbers in between the parentheses, just like that. All right, so it's just that simple. Um, so now we'll talk about uh, the responsive options, making this image responsive in width and responsive in width and height. So if you want to make this image uh, responsive in width, make sure enable fixed height is checked and then set the image height here. Um, I do go over this in the uh, widget here so you can read it. So responsive width, to have the image be responsive in width, enable the fixed height option and set the widget to responsive width using the built-in Adobe Muse resize option. So the height of this image is gonna be 300 pixels and I'm gonna go ahead and say stretch to browser width uh, just so it spans the width of the browser. And just like that, we have that shape that stretches to the width of the browser and the image uh, still stays nicely within that area. So now if I preview, you can say responsive width or stretch to browser width, either one. So I preview, we can see that image still fills the widget container and that shape uh, changes size as well. Looks good. So I can say responsive uh, width as well. Let's say I were to make this a little bit smaller and I didn't want it to stretch to the browser width. I could just do something like this and it would still be responsive in width. Just like that. Looks good. All right, let's say I wanted to make this uh, more than 300 pixels. I could try dragging out, but because within the widget, the height is set to 300 pixels, it's not gonna go uh, past 300 pixels in height. So I could say something like 500 pixels and it would make the image taller. So now it's 500 pixels and it's still responsive in width. Looks good. So let's say I wanted to make this image responsive in width and height. What I would do here is open the widget options and uncheck enable fixed height. And this is also here in the widget, uh, responsive width and height to have the image be responsive in width and height, disable the fixed height option and set the widget to responsive width and height using the built-in Adobe Muse resize option. So there I unchecked enable fixed height and here I'll go to resize and I'll say responsive width and height. So I'll go ahead and preview in the browser. And now if I resize the browser, we can see that image changes size in width and height. Uh, the reason you want to set it to responsive width and height in the resize option is because if you have other elements below it, let's say I were to add an element here and yeah, we'll just add this element. If I were to have an element below it, and I'll go, to, go ahead and preview, because it's responsive in width and height, this element moves as the image gets smaller. If I were to just set this to responsive width, the image will change size to responsive width and height because enable fixed height is not checked, but this image won't move as the, this element here won't move as the image resizes. So I'll go ahead and preview. And as we can see, we have this big gap in between this element and the image. So as a resize, the image is responsive in width and height, but we have that gap as the image gets smaller. So that's why you want to select the widget and go to responsive width and height. So that element moves with the image. All right, looks good. So we can see that element here, this blue element is moving with that image. 
Uh, so it's just that simple, setting the resize options in Adobe Muse. And if you want just responsive width, make sure enable fixed height is checked. And if you want it to be responsive width and height, just uncheck this and set it to responsive width and height in Adobe Muse. Um, if you do have enable fixed height, it can be responsive width or stretch to browser width. And then you can set the height here in the image height option. Okay, looks good. So the next options we have are image fitting. So you can scale to fill, scale to fit, and original size. Uh, these options are similar to the built-in Adobe Muse image fitting options. Um, scale to fill will try to fit the entire image within the widget container. So it's not the actual shape, but the actual uh, widget container. So picture the image where these white spots are. Let me just zoom in. Um, the image is trying will try to fill the the widget container shape, and then it gets clipped. All right. So I like scale to fill because it tries to fill most of the image within that uh, section. Uh, scale to fill, scale to fit, will try to fit the image uh, within the given uh, widget container. So even if it gets clipped from the bottom or the left side, it tries to make that whole image visible within the widget container. And then we have original size. So if your image is larger than the widget container, um, it'll just uh, fill the image within the widget container and it won't resize there. And this is where image position comes in handy. So let's say you had a really large image and you wanted to focus in on a particular area. You could just move the X and Y positions for that image. So I could say like 80% and we're gonna notice the image changes here uh, because the image is quite large. So it's just finding that coordinate within the image and showing that part of the image within the widget container and within the shape. All right, and I could you know change this to anything and just move around if I wanted to focus in on a particular part of the image. So with scale to fill and scale to fit, the image position doesn't really work because it's already trying to fit as much of that image as it can within the widget container. So the image position isn't really gonna work because it can't really, doesn't have a lot of space to move the image around because it's already trying to fill that widget container with the image. All right, so those are the options there. And then we have alternative text. And this is for screen readers that don't show images. Uh, the alternative text will show instead. So here I could just write image of a desk and books. Uh, so on screen readers, this text will appear and the user will know what the image is about. Okay, so I think we've gone over all the widget options. I'll just add a few more image shapes and work with the instance number uh, just to show that each image shape should have its own unique instance number. So here I'll add this one. I'll just copy and paste, something like that. And actually let me just drag one in here. So we have a nice square widget container and I'll add a file. I'll just select a random image. So we have that image. So there we have these two widgets. Let me go ahead and preview in the browser. Now remember they both have the instance number one. So I'll go ahead and preview. And as we can see, they both become triangles because this first widget here is inheriting the, the image shape from the second one. So the polygon properties are being inherited from the second uh, image here. So this is where you'll want to give each individual image shape its own unique instance number. So there I changed it to instance number two, and now they both have their own unique instance number. All right, so let me just uh, say scale to fill here for that, and we'll add one more just for fun. And we'll say three, and I'll go ahead to the Clip Path Maker website. So I'll click right there within the widget, and I'll create a just a shape. We can do a star. Star looks cool or interesting if that's what you're going for. And I'll go ahead and paste that code within the polygon code section. And I'll go ahead and change the image. So we'll do something like this. And I'll go ahead and make it a little bit larger. So we'll do 500 by 500. Looks good. And I'm gonna change the height of the image to 500, so it's a perfect square. So the width of this widget container was 500 and the height was 300, and that's why the the star didn't look like a perfect star because it's kind of a, it needs a square shape to become a perfect star there. So um, we just set the height to 500. So now we have this nice star shape for the uh, image here. So I'll go ahead and preview. And just like that, we have those images and perfect. I'll go ahead and set this to responsive width in the resize option. And there we go. Looks good. So that star kind of gets skewed. So I would want to set it to responsive width and height. All right, so let's do one more shape. 
and we'll just select we'll select this pentagon and I'll just kind of move the shapes around a bit just to create some abstract shape here something like that I'll copy the polygon code and I'll paste in here all right looks good and I can preview and we have that abstract shape right in there and if I wanted it to be responsive in width and height uncheck enable fixed height and set it to responsive width and height there all right so here we go and that shape just gets smaller all right looks good so that's it for the image shapes widget um, again we're using the CSS clip pathmaker website uh, from Bennett Feely that's a really useful website and you just copy the polygon code to apply the shape uh, to the widget and then fill the widget with an image and then the image is cropped to that shape all right so it's a really cool feature I've always wanted to create kind of unique shapes in Adobe Muse rather than just a rectangle square or a circle so now with the image shapes widget you can now do that so to get access to this widget you simply go to museforyoushop.com and here you can click on subscribe today and here you can click subscribe now to get access to all widgets and any new widgets I come out with for 39 a year here is the image shapes widget and here you can click add to cart to purchase individually or again you can click subscribe to get access to all widgets and any new widgets I come out with for 39 a year. Here are the features included, a few of the widget options, the community section if you had any questions about the widget, and this video will be right here as well. Okay, so that's it for this video tutorial. Again, I do this to help you build awesome websites without code. If you like this video tutorial, you can subscribe below. Also in the show more section below are links to other resources and links to museforyoushop.com. So again, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video tutorial. Thank you. News for you, awesome websites without code.